Hi everyone, how's everybody doing? Hopefully you're fine out there and I'm so grateful that you've come back to hear what I have to say to talk about my journeys as a new entrepreneur, a journey as a new blogger and YouTuber and all that stuff. And you know, my mind, our minds are so creative. They play tricks on us so many times. And there were so many excuses that I played over and over in my head that I told myself continually, uh, excuses that prevented me from taking a leap, from pursuing what I, exa what I wanted to pursue, from pursuing my dreams, from essentially leaving my job. So I wanted to go through a few of these excuses, and there were a lot of them that I told myself, but I just want to break down a few of them. And if you can relate to any of these, let me know in the comment section below. And as always, if you like this video, please subscribe. What that means is you're going to get an email notifying you every time I upload something new, you'll get my video straight to your inbox. So if you like it, then please subscribe. All right, here we go. Excuse number one. I didn't want to be considered a quitter. You know, when I thought about the notion of quitting my job to pursue things that I've always always wanted to do, I didn't want to be thought of as a quitter. But you know what, just because you quit doesn't mean you're a quitter. If you think about all the famous people, famous entrepreneurs, how many of them quit um, a job or didn't finish school? We hear about all these college dropouts and still went on to do something great. So. Uh, I really had to kind of change my mindset a little bit when it came to that notion of quitting, especially because I have left a job in the past. Some of you may know that I left, I had a venture uh, in the past called the Media Huddle, and I didn't want to be considered as such. But essentially, it is, if you have a dream, if you're, you're looking to, to pursue something, you should never give up on that. And it shouldn't matter what people have to say, people will always have something to say, but it's all about how you feel inside and whether you in fact feel fulfilled. So for me, I had to kind of switch my mindset about what I felt about um, the word quitting and what that really meant. And for me, it's not quitting, it's just being persistent and not giving up on yourself. Excuse number two, I kept saying to myself, you know what, maybe my situation will improve. Maybe my mindset will change. Maybe I'll start thinking differently. Maybe I, things will get better. Whatever it is that was, you know, for you, that something that you're dealing with, whether it's a, a situation with a coworker or you just weren't feeling that consistency, like in my case, it wasn't what I was doing wasn't consistent with who I felt I was or uh, who I wanted to be. You kind of try to convince yourself that perhaps if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, which is the definition of insanity by the way, that it will get better, something will change somehow. But in actuality, I was the one who needed to change. I was the one who needed to shake up the routine, shake up what I'd been doing over and over again, expecting a different result. And that's when finally something with this situation that you found was negative or 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 what the reason you complain about your job or whatever your your situation is now you're the one who has to make that move and so to to trick yourself and to say you know what it's going to get better it's going to get better is the wrong thing to do and so that was an excuse that i use time and time again excuse number three my excuse was i didn't want i don't want to lose my status I don't want to lose, you know, recognition or the limelight of my job or my friends or make less money. That's a big thing. I know a lot of people think about it all the time. It's a lot of the question I get often. And, you know, I have to do a whole separate thing uh, in regard to, to money and feeling confident there. But when you think about what you're going to lose, you can't think about what you're going to lose. You got to think about what you're going to gain. And that's how I always looked at it. Because as you know, and I've said in videos, you, you, you read it in my recent blog post, 
the loss of, of, of my identity, of who I was, uh, and all the symbols and the things that go along with that identity, sometimes it's difficult for me to deal with from time to time. And it's natural because that is part of growth. I'm growing, I'm developing, and you will find that too if this is a situation you find yourself in. Um, but you really can't think of the cost of what you would lose because really, not acting, not pursuing your dream, not investing in yourself and taking the time to explore what it is you really want to do, that in itself comes with a cost. You know what I mean? That in itself could cost you, you know, being a negative Nancy at work. Maybe then your coworkers won't even want to be around you. Maybe your work will suffer. Your credibility goes down in that regard. Maybe it'll affect your marriage. Maybe it'll affect your family life. Who knows what the, the, the offshoot of not doing something because you think it's gonna cost you in other ways, but it really is, it's all about perspective, right? So you cannot focus on what you're gonna lose again, because like I said, you have to think about the positive and what will happen when you win. Excuse number four, I often said to myself before making a move, before really deciding, you know what, I'm gonna give my, my, my true life, my truth, my, my dreams a full go. I often said to myself, but you've invested so much already. You've had over a decade in this industry working as a broadcaster from humble beginnings at CFRB to basically creating your own fake demo reel essentially to get into the weather network and then progressing through the ranks at CB24. You've invested so much. And I'm of course only talking about my own personal situation. But as I said before, it's the investment in yourself. There's so many people who have started over or made a shift. When you think about actors like, uh, what's his name there, Morgan Freeman or Samuel L. Jackson and the things they've started later in life. When you think about, um, I was reading something about, who's the woman who does the dresses? Um, the uh, Vera Wang. That she designed her first dress when she was like 45 or 50. You sometimes think about, you know when you, let's say you're a baker or whatever, and you bake a cake and you think it's like your masterpiece. You think it's the best thing you've ever done. And then next week you do something that tops that, that's even better. What if you had just said, you know what, this is, this is, I think this is it for me, this first cake that I did. And you would never even know what you're capable of. So that's what I kind of had to remind myself when I, when I thought about, oh, but I've already invested so much in this one area. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be safe and be comfortable with just being here. You can't be safe, comfort. You, you gotta always step out of your comfort zone and, and, and try because it's often that discomfort, discomfort, is, is that a word? Yeah, it's often that, that shakes up and, and creates change and, and brings wonderful things into your life. Excuse number five, what if I suck? What if I'm not enough? What if I fail? That's the big one I know that a lot of you think about all the time. You're afraid to fail. What if that happens? And for me, that was, that was huge. Of course, it's the unknown. It's uncertain. You don't know what's gonna happen. But I was also thinking about my past. And it's so very often that our past dictate how we feel about what we're gonna do moving into the future, but it really shouldn't be the case. I have, um, I, I, I'd left my job once before and I pursued um, a, a career. I'd started a business, the Media Huddle, it was a media networking uh, company, and it didn't go as I had hoped. It was not as successful as I wanted it to. I don't know if I necessarily think of it as a failure, but to me, if it was not a success, then by extension, you know, you, you could think it you failed. However, I had to change my mindset and the way I thought about failure. Because, you know, they talk about this, I hear this quote a lot, I don't exactly know what it is, but the fact that you want to increase the amount of times that you fail because with that comes an increased likelihood of success. Because every time you fail, every time you make a mistake, you learn something new. So you can't think of it as failure, you got to think about it as learning. And um, just as long as you are able to to take note of what you're doing and to not make the same mistakes over again, 
then you will be able to overcome that fear of failure. So once you, you, you come to, to realize that failure is really just a, a state of mind, it is um, a movie basically that your, your, your mind likes to play over and over again. Once you change the characters, once you change the genre and make it uh, a love story about yourself instead of some kind of horror, you will inevitably change the way you feel about failure and that is such an important thing so don't make that an excuse the way I did uh, initially on my journey. So there you have it just a few excuses that I told myself a lot and maybe you can relate to that. Keep in mind guys this is my experience I'm just sharing with you personal stories giving you an insight into what is and was going in going on in my mind at the time I'm in no way trying to be like leave your job as you know but I'm just sharing I'm just putting things out there so that you could be a part of this this journey and if you like it by all means hit the like button below you can comment in the comment section and then also please subscribe see ya